I recently read a story. So this is the, this is the ultimate crucifixion moment when God is crucified. But I, I, I noticed that we all experience these things. And I, and I read a, a Facebook post recently on my Facebook page. Somebody said, talking about Ukraine and what was happening there and children dying and buildings being destroyed and people being homeless and, and all the horrible things that were happening and, and the power of Russia to be able to come in and do these things. And this person wrote and said, how in the world could anybody believe in God when a world you know, exists where these kinds of things happen? I totally understood what he was saying. He was angry and he was upset and it's easy to feel that way. I feel that way too. How in the world is it possible in the 21st century that a leader of a major country could think it's okay to send your forces in on trumped up charges and begin destroying people, their homes, their livelihood, their lives. How is that possible in this day and time? And when we think about this, <clears throat> and we think about the experience of people in Ukraine, there are many of them. I wonder how many of them have cried out, if not these words, something like them, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They are experiencing crucifixion moments, millions of people experiencing this. Now, our disappointment with God often comes because of our expectations about God. We expect God to do certain things and God doesn't perform in the way that we expect. We expect that a good and loving God would certainly stop all bad things from happening. Nothing bad would happen in our world. Only good and beautiful things would ever happen. But to do that, God would have to make sure that we were like robots. Like there'd be no room for you to make a bad decision, for you to make a decision you thought you wanted to make, but ends up hurting somebody else. No, there's no room for that if God is just making us as robots. Instead, we live in a world where God gave us free will. We live in a world where our bodies are fragile. We live in a world where bad things can happen to us and we can do bad things to other people. And then we have this huge responsibility that we carry, this weight of responsibility to use our freedom and our power and our influence for good and not for evil. Again and again and again, God tries to teach us that. Jesus, this is a primary focus of his teaching is how we're meant to live our lives towards other people and how we're to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We're even to love our enemies. But life doesn't always work out that way. So we get disappointed sometimes because God doesn't stop things from happening. He doesn't stop illness and, and suffering that comes from natural causes. Well, our bodies are permeable. You know, they're, they're, they're able to contract diseases. We understand that. We wish he'd take away cancer and COVID, but instead he works through doctors and nurses and researchers and and people who come alongside us and help us, but he doesn't promise that our body's going to last for 100 years or 110 years. Sometimes they last for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. Life is sometimes hard. We wish that there was always blue skies and 75 degree temperatures, but sometimes there's storms and tornadoes and rains. <clears throat> That's the world that we live in. And what God did not promise was that life would be just beautiful and perfect for every single human being. What he promised was, no matter what happens on earth, I'm going to walk with you through it. That's what Jesus promised. That's what we find in Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, not I won't walk through it. Though I walk through it, I know I won't be afraid because you are with me. In 1963, there was a bombing at the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Many of you remember this story. And there were members of the KKK who took dynamite, stuck it underneath the steps to the church building. And then they planned to detonate it right between the Sunday school and worship hour. And when they detonated those sticks of dynamite, the building was blown in from one side, a huge gaping hole blown in where the stairs were on the inside of the building and children running up and down the stairs, heading to Sunday school or to worship. And four children were killed that day. Dr. Martin Luther King was preaching the funeral service for three of those four children. And he made this comment that I've used many times at funerals where people have died untimely deaths, especially children. This is what he says about life. He says, at times life is hard, as hard as crucible steel. It, is, it has its bleak and painful moments. Like the ever-flowing water of a river, life has its moments of drought, its moments of flood. Like the ever-changing cycle of the seasons, life has the soothing warmth of the summers, but also the piercing chill of its winters. But through it all, God walks with us. We all live a crucified life. We all experience crucifixion in our lives at times. You may be walking through one of those times right now. And what we need to hear when we're walking through them, when we've just been through them or we'll go through them again, is the Easter story.